Okay, so I'm going to show you how to store data in a tiny web database, tiny web DB, um, using App Inventor 2. It's very straightforward. I've got a simple application here. This is a button, um, and when I click it, I'm going to store some users. Um, I've dragged in the tiny web DB component from here. I think I haven't renamed it or anything. And I'm also going to use a notifier just to tell us when the users have been stored. Okay, so we need to go into blocks to do this. Ah, before we do that, tiny web DB. By the way, um, you need to tell it which database it's going to use, and by default, it uses App Inventor's default database, Google's one App in, in tiny web DB. You might want to set up your own um, if you're going to. What you want to keep your data um, just for development purposes. This is sufficient, though. Anyway, okay. If you go to the blocks editor here um, you can see what I've done we'll ignore that error for now what I've done is set the button click event to uh, to this to call the tiny webdb store value and the tag I'm going to use to identify the users or in this case these three users is just the users tag and make a list is how I'm going to do it and the reason I'm going to make a list is because I want to use them as individual items in list picker perhaps or some other uh, event in that way so what I need to do is click the button but that doesn't on its own store them what it does is it sends the trigger to tiny web DB to store the values you can't guarantee they've been stored until you receive from tiny web DB the values dot value stored event and that's been triggered so what I've done here just to show us that they are stored is set the users are now stored text message. So um, hopefully when we uh, get the uh, emulator up and running and I click on this, we'll see the users stored message. So we'll go to connect emulator. Usually takes quite a while. Better off doing this on an old Android phone if you can, it's much quicker. So some time has passed and we have the store users button now on the emulator. Click, clicking that should store those users in the blocks here into our tiny web DB default database. Let's do that and we should get our users are now stored. There it is. The event has been triggered and the users are in the database. Sadly with the default database there is no easy way that I've found anyway of viewing the contents of the database just to prove it works but if you do have your own database then you can use the app engine to get in there and look at your data store values just to ensure that things are as they should be in the database and you can monitor all kinds of activity using the dashboard so app engine's great for that um, as I said using the default one here as we are if you can't actually see the list so the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a list picker uh, that loads those users into it I should also say that there is another way you can initialize these databases with values, and that is simply to copy that URL there. Um, I've just done a Control A, Control C on that, um, and just paste that into a tab here. I've got that there, and what you'll get are the available calls that you can use. So you could actually store a value if you want, and this would be the same as just creating a tag inside App Inventor itself. So I could create the users tag here and store the values that I wanted. User one, user two, user three. So this would create for me a record with those values. If I wanted to view the values themselves, I can always use the get value here and retrieve those values. So I know I've already stored some users, so if I get the value users. This is the exa exactly the same as got value inside App Inventor here, tiny web db got value, that one there. That's going to show me what there is inside that tag and you can see the value for the users tag currently consists of three items, user one, user two and user three. So you can always check that your data is stored using that get value uh, call there.